So today we're going to talk about food as medicine and how farmers markets can um, impact the community by partnering with local health professionals. And uh, we obviously have some challenges now with, with the virus coming on. So some of the slides are showing you what has worked in the past and what still can work in the future. And, um, and we can talk about adaptations as well, but, um, but the premise will remain the same. So oh, please work nicely for me. Okay, so we've all heard this, that let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And this was stated by hypocrisy, uh, hypocrisy, ah, yeah, let my words work. I can't even say his name right now. Uh, <laughs> um, so long ago, and so it's so true that we wanna make sure that we are um, paying attention to what we put into our bodies because we truly are what we eat in that regard. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I, like I said, I'm a holistic health coach. And um, one reason why um, I feel uh, that I'm able to talk about this is my own personal journey that I've gone on. And um, about 13 years ago, I started my own personal journey to health. I was having some joint pains and inflammation and um, lethargy all through the day. And I got some blood work done, saw some holistic doctors and come to find out that I had um, hypothyroidism. And so that led me down a path of researching and finding out more about foods and um, food as medicine. And I can, I can honestly say that um, now, you know, 13 years later, I have more energy, I um, feel better, I have, you know, knock on woods, no diseases, no surgeries, um, issues like that. And I attribute that to food and lifestyle. Um, and, and that's kind of what I want to share with you today is um, not necessarily what I've done, but what I've learned about food and nutrition. And it's my passion to show that um, to other people. So I think the important thing is, is just to kind of show you what and where we're at as a nation right now. And, uh, and I, I don't think it's any big secret that we have some pretty bad habits that um, we've established in our nation and it's affected our health in a very big way. So I just want to share some of those statistics with you first before we go into what you can do with the farmer's markets to make a difference. So this is a, a graph to show if we were going to eat um, in a healthy way and get all the micro and macronutrients that we needed for a balanced diet, this is kind of what our plate would look like. We'd be having about 40% of unprocessed whole vegetables, which is what farmer's markets will provide, right? 10% of unprocessed fruits, 10% um, of grains, you know, um, whole grains unprocessed again, and then 10% of high healthy fats that help to do so many fantastic things in the body, but your metabolism and helping to um, boost those omega-3s, which is good for heart health. And then about 25% of our diet would be protein rich foods. And 5% would be um, our spices and herbs and things that we would add in. Now this is ideal for ideal health and not necessarily the way that America eats, um, this is more of a picture of how we actually consume our foods in America. And this slide is actually a little older, so the stats have changed just a tiny bit. Um, our processed food intake is anywhere from 63 to 80% now of foods that have added fats, oils, sugars, and refined grains in them. Um, plant food, we eat somewhere between 7 to 12%. Um, as an average. And this is foods that will, people will say, you know, oh yeah, I had some nuts in my Snickers bar, or I had some whole oats in my granola bar. So it's generally a processed version of the food too. Um, animal foods were taken in about 25%. And, you know, interesting with that, there, there is no wrong um, food or bad food, but too much of like animal products can cause inflammation in the body. So dietary guidelines have really not changed on that for years and years, but our plates have changed in the way that restaurants have served us has changed. And um, three ounces of, of uh, meat product for a woman and five and a half ounces of meat product for a man in a day has been pretty much the, um, the necessary amount that we would need for health, but not, not really how we eat on our plate. 
So this too is a slide that was created in 2011. So it's a little dated, but it just shows a good picture of exactly how many vegetables do, does the average American take um, in their body on a daily basis. And uh, you can see that in Alaska, we get about almost two servings of vegetables a day. Now, the recommended amount of daily vegetables is four to six at a minimum. And if you're really going for optimal health, you'd have seven to nine servings. And serving sizes are a half a cup of, of uh, cooked vegetables and one cup of raw vegetables. So you see we're really not necessarily hitting the mark. And, uh, but thank goodness you guys are here to help us with that. So this is a little more accurate and up to date of our fruits and vegetable consumption in uh, the US at this time. So right now, only about 12% of adults meet the daily fruit intake, and only about 9% of adults in America meet the daily vegetable intake in the US. So this is that dark green line is the percentage that we're taking in, and the light blue is, is the 100% that we should be taking in. So we're definitely not hitting the mark, which is affecting our health in a very big way. And so that's the next slide I wanna show you is how does this, what does it do? What, is it, what type of a difference does it make? So um, they're predicting right now in this year, in the year 2020, there's gonna be an estimated um, almost 2 million new cancer cases in the US. Um, adult obesity, and this is, this is not overweight, this is obesity, um, rates in the ranges from 25 to 39% throughout the United States right now. Um, Obesity and overweight were in the 67 to 80 percent, depending on the state and area. Um, children's obesity ranges um, between the ages 10 through 17 is 15 percent. And it's kind of interesting that um, toddlers are um, from two to four in the 15 percent obese, and then it kind of um, it's fades out from uh, five to 10, and then they're back up in the 15% again. So definitely um, something that we wanna make a difference in, in the types of food that we provide. 46% of US adults are estimated to have hypertension. So heart disease has been the number one killer for well over 50 years. Um, over 2000 people die daily from cardiovascular disease. And in the US, someone dies every three minutes from a stroke. Um, right now, it's estimated that over 30 million people in the U.S. have autoimmune conditions. This one is really um, upfront right now because um, if you have an autoimmune condition, you're going to be more prone for getting viruses like the COVID-19. So being aware of your health and trying to make a difference with the foods that you take in are going to make a big difference on how this virus affects your body. 10.5% uh, of the U.S. population is, a, is estimated to have diabetes, and right now we've got about 34% of the population that is estimated for prediabetes, and there's plenty of people who don't go to the doctor who probably could be diagnosed that are not. We have about more than 60% of the American diet consists of highly processed foods that are loaded with added salts and sugars, um, so the need for healthy food is definitely there. And our health, it can be affected by many factors, and we know this, um, outside stress, work stress, family stress, um, physical um, stress and anxiety, our actual DNA and genetics makes a difference in our health, and then our lifestyle, right? Are we eating the right types of foods? Are we getting in our two liters of water a day? Are we getting at least seven hours of sleep? Because that's what research shows us that we need for health. And, um, and then are we getting in some type of exercise throughout the day? Um, and these are, these are all factors that are very important for health. And we also know that nutrition plays a very important role in the status of our health. And so that's what we wanna focus on here today. So good nutrition can support the body on all levels. Obviously, it can affect the, the physical body and how our, um, our organs are working and how we move and our you know, joints and all that. Our mind, good nutrition is um, known to help relieve anxiety and depression and even um, helps with 
preventing Alzheimer's. The soul and spirit, we know that our moods and our, um, our whole outlook um, can change when our health decreases. So good nutrition can support all these areas. And good news is that the farmers have the key to health, and that is gonna be the fresh fruits and vegetables that you provide. And this is really where um, I get excited and the passion comes in because um, we have the resources that we need to put the right nutrients into the body to prevent disease and to um, kind of overcome a lot of things that are predicted to happen to the American people. So in my practice, what I do is I work with people to increase plants and um, whole foods on their plate, and we call it crowding out. So you put as many good whole foods on your plate, just like the diagram showed us before, 80%, you know, 50, it showed 50, 50 to 80% is what you wanna be having on your plate for good health. And, um, and then that just crowds the bad, bad stuff off so you have plenty of nutrients coming into the body. So what we want to aim for is, you know, three or more servings of fruit a day, berries are primary, um, and we have some beautiful berries here in Alaska, um, two servings of legumes, and five servings um, of whole grains, and that being like a half a cup, and that's up to, you can have two to five in there, but four or more servings of vegetables is really key for um, health, and that should be a minimum. And then um, if you wanna go for maximum health, we're looking at six to nine servings of vegetables in a day. So just a little bit of facts here. People who eat a nutrient-rich plant-based diet have lower cholesterol, less heart disease. Um, there's a lot of studies that are out there that show that plant-based diets help to lower blood pressure, which affects many, many thousands of Americans. Um, diets that are high in complex carbohydrates and fiber um, like plant-based diets are shown to regulate blood sugar levels. And so that would make a huge impact on um, type 2 diabetes. So research came out, you know, several years ago saying that we're, we're about to the point on an average that every one in four Americans is being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which is just crazy, um, it, but preventable. That's, I guess that's the good news. Um, people who eat plant-based have a lower risk of osteoporosis as well, and lots of great calcium can be found in dark leafy greens. So when I'm working with my clients and we're, you know, going through foods and how to eat foods, we often look at the food label and um, try to decipher how much we want of, you know, certain types of ingredients to prevent disease and that type of thing. Um, but the simple nutrition from, uh, from the farm is that we, we don't have to have a food label on those. We can just look at those foods, look at the colors, enjoy the textures. And it's, to me, it's simple nutrition. Just get more of it on the plate and um, your body will respond in a, in a positive way. So I just wanted to highlight some of what we grow here in Alaska and some of the nutritional benefits that we can find here. And obviously we have um, greenhouse crops and we have specialty crops that people grow, but these are just some of the primary crops that are put out by most of the farmers um, at the farmer's markets. So we know that potatoes, right? They're, they're full of vitamin C and magnesium, iron, selenium, copper, and zinc. And they have this small protein that can be found in them. Um, it's angiotensin converting enzyme, and it's you know short for ACE, and that helps to regulate blood pressure. Um, zucchini has phytonutrients that help age-related macular degeneration um, to reduce, and it helps to reduce cataracts, and it also helps to balance blood sugar levels. The cabbage, the kale, kohlrabi, turnips, Swiss chard, broccoli, cauliflower. Um, radishes, these are all in the family that's called the cruciferous vegetable family. And the cruciferous vegetables are key at um, helping us with heart health, reduction of cancer, and, uh, and there's been fantastic research on the cruciferous vegetables. One cup a day can help reduce your um, heart disease by 40%. Remember, heart disease is the number one killer. So definitely worth getting on the plate. Um, beets are anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, they fight free radicals which can cause cancer, 
and especially good at detoxification and helping with liver health, which is um, fantastic. Carrots rich in beta carotene, vitamin C, they support eye health and your immune system. Um, spinach is rich in vitamin C, anti-inflammatory benefits, and it's a good source of zinc. Um, so your dark leafy greens and your spinach, um, zinc is really important right now when we're talking about fighting this um, COVID-19. We want to get zinc and vitamin C foods it's found in our vegetables and our fruits. All right. So how do we go from the farmer and the farmer's market to the nutrition professional and make a difference in your community? So these are just some methods of success that have worked um, in my particular business and in, in things that I've done. Um, and I know that there are other health professionals in the community that are doing some of these same things as well. So whether you're partnering with someone like me or you're using someone who can, who can um, do these same things, that's just a, a plus. So the biggest tool that we have um, as health professionals bringing nutrition to our clients is, in my opinion, um, the farmer's markets and the CSA boxes. So the community sustained agriculture boxes where you get a subscription um, once a week or once every other week, whatever the program is, you can get a half share, a full share, is a perfect way to bring produce into people's homes and to introduce them to Alaskan grown vegetables and, um, and all the wonderful nutrients that they need for health. Uh, in years past, I have partnered with several, um, working with um, the university. I worked for the university for nine years in the Cooperative Extension and we partnered with Spring Creek Farms through them. And then I've partnered with Moonstone Farms and with um, Piracy Pickett and able to um, share with people how to use the vegetables and recipes and the explanation of the nutrients that are provided in these CSA boxes. So we're going to kind of show you all the ways that we can use the CSA boxes um, as a nutrition professional in the community. So this, this is um, just some graphics of when I was working for the university and we were working um, hand in hand with Spring Creek Farm. And at the time they were giving us, um, and this program is still continuing, it's called the TILT program um, through the Cooperative Extension. But when we started, we were getting about 10 shares and we would take it to um, a local um, church and people were invited to come in by the food bank. Um, or through the food bank and, and then through other sources of advertisement. And so each week we were sharing what vegetables were in the CSA boxes, how to cook with them, um, what nutrients they provided. And, uh, and we were getting upwards from um, 40 to 50 people that were coming in the room at a time. So it was a very effective program, ran it all summer long, um, all through the end of the growing season. Um, like I said, it's been going for probably seven years now, so quite some time. So it's a really great program. Um, this is just another way that we can bring um, information to the community through CSA boxes. So the vegetables that are shared, I'll bring professionals into my kitchen and whether they are um, growers, we've got acupuncturists, physical um, therapists, uh, physical trainers, Chinese medicine specialist, um, and these different professionals will come into the kitchen with me. We prepare foods. We talk about how these foods are beneficial for the body, but also these professionals get to share what happens when their clients start to make differences in their nutrition and how what they see as far as their medical care with them. So this is a fantastic way to pair um, the food that is growing with health professionals. And, um, and we do this on Facebook Live. So really so many people can see this and it can be shared and the recipes are shared, but so is the professional and medical advice on how fruits and vegetables are beneficial. Um, On-site food demonstrations at the market. I'm sure this will be um, impacted with what's happening um, with, with the viruses right now, but demonstrations at the market are extremely powerful. Um, I set up one year at the Willow Farmers Market and um, 
we, I went around to the different vendors and got a, just a few zucchini from one and some herbs from another and, and some, um, one man was making salsa and we, we compiled this, or I compiled this dish with all of the different foods from the market, made a, uh, vegetable pasta sauce and, and a, um, and we put that out at the market and literally all the zucchini sold out that day and all of the um, herbs that we were using in the recipe sold out. So it was extremely powerful. People get to see it, they get to smell it, they get to taste it. And um, that's, a, that's a big seller for produce at the market. And then you can share the recipes and again, the nutritional information. Um, so whenever I've been given shares of vegetables, I will, I do several different programs, the junior chef program inside the college, where we're teaching young students how to use fresh produce to make healthy um, foods and meals. So cooking seems to be a lost art these days. And so we want these kids to learn how to cook and how to prepare foods using whole vegetables. So the farmers markets and the CSA boxes too can be used in, in these ways, very impactful in the school district um, and the local colleges. Uh, hosting local plant-based cooking classes. Um, again, this year when I was getting shares from um, one of the local farms, I would take the food that I was given and hosting cooking classes and then we'll talk and, and promote that farmers um, foods and the CSA boxes. So we, we use what's local. Um, we show people how to get plants and I do the plant-based cooking classes. I don't incorporate meat in there and it's not because I don't um, eat Alaskan grown meat. It's just merely because I want people to know that vegetables can taste fantastic. So that's what we're going for there. Um, so CSA boxes can be used in that way as well. Corporate learning with farm fresh food. Um, agencies might very well um, be interested in purchasing shares for corporate learning as well. And, um, and this is where companies come together and they wanna do something to um, do team building. So we do a cooking class again, using Alaskan grown vegetables as much as we can to promote local produce and health. Um, I think this one's really great. Um, workshops featuring food preservation. So again, you know, this is classes that I do, but the Cooperative Extension does fantastic classes on food preservation as well. Um, and I'm sure there's other local entities that do this. Um, food preservation is one way that we can take a short growing season and we can extend it all through winter by using our, our fresh produce that we have, whether we're making sauerkraut or we're doing probiotic foods or, um, or just jarring and, and canning. Um, wonderful way to, um, especially the fermented foods, to keep health going all through the winter. Um, I, promote, I just wanna promote a little bit about the faith-based outreach programs because um, a lot of times the local churches will, um, will, they'll share with people fresh foods that they get, but also programs and open that up to the community. So that's a, just another good resource. Um, this particular one, we were doing um, a program called God's Healthy Body, and we were showing people some of, talking about some of the foods that um, grew during Bible times, but then um, how can we incorporate some of those foods now or similar foods into healthy meals and, uh, and it was well attended and, um, and a good show. And, there, and there's just a lot of programs that would benefit from farm foods and teaching people about nutrition and health. Um, the State Fair is one location that we can do uh, if you wanted to donate any of your um, food for the day. I, I've gone and pulled stuff from some local vendors at the farm before or at the fair and we just demo some fresh produce at the fair and again showing people um, how to prepare Alaskan grown and the benefits of it and, uh, and you get a pretty good audience there whether it's um, locals and people from out of state just getting a good look at, at what grows here in Alaska. <clears throat> um, the most, probably the most effective and um, going to be um, what will be the most effective in this time is, is partnering with local CSA farms. Um, and like I said, I've done this for the last um, 
well, it's probably 11 years now, is um, getting a share from a local farm, take it to the teaching kitchen, run a video on what the foods are, how to use them for health and nutrition, and, um, and then putting out recipes that have been prepared through video and talking into the boxes with a CSA or through the email chain. And people then will learn how to use these foods and they will learn the nutritional benefits. I think when people know why it's good for them and know that they can create foods that their family will eat, then they will take more of it and, uh, and, and buy more of it. And, and that's really what, um, what we wanna see happen. So some of this has already been talked about. I loved following the SNAP and the WIC because that was an area that I worked in for, for years. And, um, and so I, I really um, can appreciate the work that they do. So places of impact to change community health, you know, obviously it's gonna be places where um, people are lower income and senior centers, um, WIC, shelters, schools, summer feeding programs, um, the food bank, local churches, the cooperative extension. These are all programs that um, where food can be taught and, and nutrition can be taught and where the farmer's markets, just by pairing with an educator, um, one share can be um, brought to a large group and shared and, and the information can be put out to where they will then go and seek these um, fresh foods out from the markets. And so that's where that partnership comes in is where someone can talk about the food, can present it and show people how to eat it and then send them your way. Um, and these are just a few testimonials that people have shared. There's lots of testimonials that could be shared, but these are some that when we were doing the um, live cooking demos, you know, people really appreciated the handouts and they appreciated the recipes. They appreciated knowing um, that they could use vouchers at the market. Um, some people, I have a lady here who's a 20 year cancer survivor and understand that her immune system benefits from good nutrition. So she really appreciated the handouts and the recipes and how, and how she could continue her journey to health. Um, we would take these shares into different places and so, um, and they appreciated it. And then following up with some nutrition education and saying, okay, here's what you got. Here's how to cook with it. Um, here's what it's going to do for your body. And, um, and then people like to know what to do with those strange vegetables like kohlrabi and, uh, and some of the different kales that they'd never seen before. So bringing in a nutrition professional who can help with those things and who can talk about what the foods are um, is just a, it's a great partnership. It's a win-win. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can see any chats, which I cannot myself, but I can hop in there for you. Right. Winona. Um, oh. We've had folks mostly posting, just highlighting some of your great take home points about the, what'd you say, Amy, about the cruciferous veggies reducing heart disease by 40%. Um, Let's see, we do have about five minutes left um, until the next session and now is a great time, folks. If you have a question for Winona, um, go ahead and type it into the chat box and we'll make sure that, that she says it. We got a good job, Winona. <laughs> good. Yeah, so, um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about um, the services that I provide, uh, you can go, my Facebook page is at Nourished Health Coaching Services, and there are videos on there featuring Alaskan grown vegetables that I've done throughout the years. Um, on my uh, website, it's at uh, nourishedhcs, healthcoachingservices.com. Um, local mushrooms, absolutely. <laughs> uh, the cooking classes and different events are featured on the website um, itself. And I have a couple different um, resources that you can purchase from the site as well. There is a book called Fresh Start, which is 30 days of um, getting rid of inflammation in the body. And it's absolutely loaded with recipes and meal plans. And so that is accessible for purchase and download on the website. Um, and really try to focus on um, vegetables that we can eat here in Alaska. And um, 
working on a cookbook and hopefully that'll be out in, in another year or so. And that will be all Alaskan grown as well. And um, so those are some resources that are there. And I think through this period of um, isolation, there will be more videos going on the Facebook group. So um, you can just go to the Facebook page and there's a series that we just put on there of 30 minute meals using um, simple recipes and, and vegetables. Fantastic.